Well, after you have watched the preparation, next up is the execution portion. Now, the execution part is not difficult. Always remember the steps, follow it, do not fret, and stay calm. Let's begin the execution. First part says that add about 5 cm depth of lime water into a clean test tube. We have already done that in the previous part. Second, they say remove the stopper from one of the boiling tube containing pee. We're supposed to heat this boiling tube for about a minute. Then while we are heating, we withdraw several samples using this thing called the teat pipette, which is dropper pipette. Of course, do not allow the dropper to drop inside into the boiling tube. Well, first of all, let's begin. Turn on our Bunsen burner and we're going to start heating. Now, you must understand that uh, most of the time when we are using the lime water test, the test of carbon dioxide, everybody know. And usually we use this thing called a delivery tube. This is the first time they're asking you to use this TP pad. So, I'm going to show you how to use it. First of all, of course, remove the stopper. So, as we heat this part, remember. Now, this is a TP pad. Squeeze out all the gas. And then, as you heat, Bring this inside, we count 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, take it out, put it right inside our lime water. This thing must go through the lime water and bubble through it. I already see a slight, uh, can you see that it's already turned? But we are supposed to do this for about a minute, so I'm going to follow the instruction and do it about a minute. But of course, in exam, if it's already turned to wipe PPT immediately for the first time round, oh, you can just stop. If I were you, I would still continue to heat because I want to see if there's any changes to the solid. Does it change color? Does it change state? Uh, is there any other things that I need to take note of? Is there gases that's evolved that is spectacular? So, we're going to repeat this. For about a minute. Always count 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 in your heart. Do it quietly, do the exam. Take out and then squeeze it through again. Now, before you enter into the test, remember to the boiling tube, remember to squeeze out all the gas so that all the lime, uh, all the lime water, sorry, make sure the lime water doesn't get inside your solid. All right, go inside, take it out, and then, all right, I have seen enough of things already. Turn off the Bunsen burner. Let's go to write our observation right now. So the solid doesn't change, uh, doesn't change at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down solid P. remain as a white solid and of course uh, the gas evolved when bubbled through lime water gives a white PPT this is uh, practical you can write short form now don't forget, remember the four things, the states, the color, the gas evolved, and not only that. Let's take a look at the test tube. Remember, if there's a water droplets form, we have to say. So if I take a closer look, I can see there are really water droplets form over here at the side of the test tube. So I'm going to write it down. Water droplets form at the side of the test tube. Next one, add about 1 cm depth of solution cube into the other boiling tube. So I suppose to add 1 cm depth, so this is my Q. So 1 cm depth is about this amount, all right? And this is my solid P, so Q into P. Whoa, I actually see uh, effervescent forming. Now, because uh, there's effervescent, it goes to show that there is existence of a gas. But I didn't prepare. I didn't know that there's a gas. So, but I suspect that it's carbon dioxide. So I'm going to use calcium hydroxide, which is the lime water. Hopefully, I still have time. But this time around, I'm going to use a delivery tube. Well, I'm a little bit too late. Most of the gas has already uh, escaped. But I'm going to do a little cheat here. Because since I add the solution that is a, a, the, a white precipitate form, uh, sorry, a get, a effervescent form, so I'm going to add this to see if I can get a white precipitate.
Well, I don't get why precipitate, but like I always say, if there's effervescent, there is existence of gas. So what I'm going to do is I'm still going to take a risk and write down suspecting that it is actually a carbon dioxide. So let me shift the paper up. I'm going to write down the observation. So just now when I add where upon adding solution Q to P, effervescent EFF, E R V E S C E N C E. Effervescent was seen. Now, if you don't know how to spell, if this is your QA notes or your Bible that I finally say, effervescent is actually spelled over here, okay? Effervescence was seen. And I'm going to say that gas evolved when bubble through lime water gives a white PPT. Secondly, it's quite obvious over here that upon adding solution Q into solid P, a blue precipitate is formed. So I'm going to say a blue PPT was observed. Full stop. Well, I finished this part. Let's go to part two. At part C, add about 1 cm depth of solution Q into a clean test tube. So, this is my part C. Q over here. So, I'm going to follow what I have written down Q over here. Nitrate acid over here. Isn't the marking very helpful? There's no reaction when I add nitrate acid. Well, we all know that acid is added to test if there's existence of carbonate, no effervescent, nothing formed. Then we're going to add barium nitrate according to the marking. No visible reaction. Let me quickly put this aside and then write down my observation. Solution Q is a blue solution upon adding HNO3 no visible reaction I, go, I will write according to the, this portion can you see that they segregate nicely a space for you to write that over this part here upon adding BANO3 also no visible reaction let's move on part d now same thing follow the reading at q at nitrate acid this time around at silver nitrate whoa i see white precipitate forming and let's put it back and write down our observation Over here, solution Q is a blue solution upon adding HNO3, no visible reaction, upon adding AGNO3, white PPT was observed in the blue solution. We all know that silver nitrate is a test for chloride. Silver nitrate will always give a white PPT. So that is why it's a white PPT in the blue solution. They didn't end here. They go on to say add aqueous ammonia slowly and stir with a glass rod. So I'm going to add aqueous ammonia to my D. This is my D. Aqueous ammonia slowly and stir with a glass rod slowly i begin to see changes in fact i see that it's turning to a blue ppt and there are oh okay in fact i see blue precipitate slowly turn to a deep blue solution
they say add until no further changes is seen it's very obvious that this portion here i have a blue solution already and it's a deep blue solution so i don't even need a glass rod in fact i just need to see and add things slowly so i'm going to write down my observation upon adding aqueous NH3, which is aqueous ammonia, light blue PPT was observed. In excess of aqueous ammonia, a deep blue solution was formed. Well, I finished part D. Now let's move on to part E right now. Well, my part E is just at Q. And this part is sodium hydroxide. I have sodium hydroxide over here. I see light blue PPT. They say at sodium hydroxide we're shaking until no further changes is seen. Well, that's all I'm going to add and I'm going to move on already. Why is that so? Because if you still remember the previous video and if you will not remember to check out our previous video, you see when you add sodium hydroxide, which is this portion here, the moment you see a light blue PPT, the blue PPT will tell you it's copper and it's definitely insoluble in excess. So I can just write it down quickly. So let's quickly write it down. Let me shift my paper upwards so that I have space. Upon adding NaOH, a blue PPT was observed in excess of NaOH, blue PPT was insoluble. Well, I'm sure you can write better handwriting than me because I'm writing it upwards, okay? So with this, we finish this portion. And let's quickly finish up this portion when they say, using your knowledge, deduce the identity of Q. Well, those of you that's very good with your QA identification of ions, I'm sure that by now you know how to see your Q already. Q, since this part is blue, and I say just now it is blue, I know that this, the cat ion is Cu2+. Now, between the two N ions here, whether is it sulfate or is it chloride? Well, chloride is the winner. So I know that Q is actually copper chloride. And because it's copper chloride, I need to write down Q is copper 2 chloride. Make sure that you include the two because this is transition matter. So it's important that we write down the two over here. Justification for the cation. In order for us to justify the cation, let's remember that justification requires you to tell me the parts. So start with in part E. What do you do? Because when NaOH is added, a blue PPT was observed, so I'm going to write it down. Let me fold the paper so that I can write down. And in excess, the blue PPT was insoluble. Okay, justification of the anion is obvious in part D because I added silver nitrate and a white precipitate was seen. is part D. So in part D, when AG Well, we finished this portion. Let's move on to the next part. Now this portion over here says, suggest one conclusion about P that can be drawn from your observation information from our first part here. Now, if we take a closer look, we know over here that P when heated, the gas evolved, when bubbled through lime water gives a white PPT. So from here, I will know conclusion that carbon dioxide is inside of P. So when P is heated and they evolve carbon dioxide, conclude that P is a metal carbonate. 
and evidence is in part A when P was heated, gas evolved when bubbled through lime water gives a white PPT. And with that, we finish this part. Let's move on to our part G over. Now, part G here says in this question, you're about to compare the concentration of two solutions of a basic compound R1 and R2. Now, we use a measuring cylinder to transfer 2 cm cube of solution R1 into a test tube labeled R1. We have a test tube here, R1. We are supposed to transfer 2 cm cube using a measuring cylinder. This is the measuring cylinder over here. Okay, let me shift the all the things aside so that it's not so cluttered. Well, after we remove the clutter, we are ready to check out this R1 here and make sure that we fill up R1 correctly according to the reading here. Thank God that I actually do the marking. This is R1 and this is my R2. Let me place it on the table and get a good look at it. Okay, so with this in mind, we go on to see what they got to say. They say using a dropper pipette, add dilute nitric acid drop by drop with shaking to R1. I have nitric acid over here. They say we're going to add drop by drop. Okay, and this time round, they say that until the indicator change from green to purple, Okay, and we are supposed to count and record the number of drops of acid added to R1 over here. But before that, um, I missed out one step. After we transfer the test tube, they say we were supposed to add 6 drops of solution I to both test tubes. So I'm going to add 6 drops of solution I to both test tubes. So this is my R1. So I'm going to put R1 over here. R1, R1. So 6 drops. Count. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is my R2, R2 over here. Same thing. Six drops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, even if we add a little bit more, it's okay. All right, so do not fret about all these things and then get very confused by that, okay? Now, first of all, um, then they say we have to add the nitrate acid drop by drop. So I'm going to add nitrate acid. So this is my nitrate acid here, same dropper. Okay, so R1 first because this is R1 and let's just count the drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Actually, I can see a little bit of purple color coming up. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. 35, 36. 37, 38, 39, 40. 41, 42, 43, 44. <laughs> I can see a slowly turning color. It's 44. 45, 46, 47. Yes, I got it. Whoa. 47, 40, yeah, 47 is the one. I add a little bit more, see if it does it, does it go even darker, but it's 47 is the one, so I'm going to write down 47. Well, we're going to repeat for R2. This is quite a good experiment, easy, peasy. You just need to count number of droplets, quite fun, right? Okay, let's go. Twenty one, twenty two. Whoa, twenty two. It changed. Okay, so I'm gonna write down twenty two. Let me use the marker. Well, from over here, use your result from G1 to deduce which of the solution R1 or R2 is more concentrated. Well, as we can see over here, which one require more acid to neutralize it? It's, 40, uh, it's 47, the winner, which is R1 is the winner. So the more concentrated solution is R1. Why? Because R1 require more acid for it to change from green to
to purple. Full stop. There you go. We finish the entire experiment. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. I'm sure that the video has blessed you. So if you really like the video, please remember to click like and don't forget to subscribe.